Good Friday Eve everybody As you can see we're on the road The reason we're on the road is change of plan I'm dropping Michelle off which means we have to sit out um, What, 25 minutes earlier? Something like that yeah Well we sat out 20 minutes earlier because we was all having a tiff this morning wasn't we? Running around yes. <laughs> And I, I couldn't find something and oh. I, I forgot to tell Alan that I needed to be dropped off this morning Until this morning yeah, <laughs> And I was ambling away getting ready for work as normal but anyway, we're up, we're on the road, and I've got a reasonable chance of getting to work with it without being late. In fact, usually when I come set out early, I get there very early. But never mind, it's the way it is. You can never never rely on the traffic to be light. But it's a chilly start to the morning. Single digit numbers, looking cloudy, but it's not raining yet. Oh, so better get Michelle dropped up. Oh, traffic lights change. Better get Michelle dropped off. I made my way to work. It's a bit too short, man. Hi guys, I've winged that this morning. Got to work, no trouble. Uh, sorry, got to, you know, a little bit of music takes all words out of my brain. My yeah, my bloke, can't multitask, can't listen to radio and talk at the same time, apparently. Well, that's me nearly at work, Friday Eve, working day, get through today and it's uh, hot, skipping a jump to the weekend. And I can't believe I said that. Well, never mind, moving on. Hi guys, that's the working day over with. I'm just off to pick Michelle up now. I'm just going through the roadworks at the 30 mile an hour zone. Um, I've just had a bit of a complete and utter fail moment there. Just as I was about to finish work, somebody came in to speak, see me and need to deal with. So I went out and I dealt with that. It took about 20 minutes. And I thought, oh, I better hurry up. Michelle will be sitting outside waiting for me. So I ran out to find, find Michelle. And and the car was there and she wasn't there, I thought. Wonder if she's gone for a walk. So I get me I got my phone out and I was about to phone her and I thought, oh no, I drove. So I completely forgot and I drove to work this morning. And then when I did that, I'd forgotten the key, I'd left it in work, so I had to go back in work so that everybody could take the Mickey out of me if you're going the wrong way. And then uh just got in the car and I phoned Michelle up to say I was late and I had to explain to her why I was late. So she's just laughing at me. But there you go, Alan fail moment. I was stood there for at least 30 seconds before I remember I drove in this morning. It was weird. Good job I didn't ring her and ask her where she was. I'd have been embarrassed. Or even more embarrassed. Well, maybe not. Anyway, moving on. You can see your breath. Mm -hmm. Just waiting to see what they can. Oh. Is that a six or an eight? A six. I'm gonna have to get my eyes looked at. Looks at me. She's got my eyes looked at. I'm verdict is. He's blind. You said that. Good Friday morning, everybody. Weekend days upon us again. And I made that. And that sounded in my head like I was moaning about it. I am not. Get through this week. And, oh sorry, get through today. <laughs> I completely confused myself by saying something that I wasn't thinking then. I was thinking get through the day and I said get through the week. But by getting through the day, well I've got through the week. Do you think I'm waffling? Mm -hmm. It's Friday. Moving on. Okay guys, it's chin o'clock. Time to relax and forget the week. Moving on. Hey guys, Michelle's not about at the moment. She's actually gone looking through her, her books. She just finished reading a book and got up and said, that was the most depressing book ever. I'm going to pick another one. So, don't know what she was reading. We'll see if we can get it out of her later. Anyway, moving on.
guys. Like I said, Michelle's just got up and said that was the most depressing book. No, that weren't quite the words, were it? What she did, she got up and said, well, I finished that book. God, that was depressing. What were you reading? Uh, the Witchfinder's Sister by Beth Underdown. Was that one of your um, fairy leap books? No, it was one of my 52. Oh, right, okay. So one of the that you picked. That I bought myself. You paid good money to get depressed. I paid good money to depress myself, yeah. It's oddly compelling, though. It's all about um, Matthew Hopkins. Who? Matthew Hopkins, self styled witch finder general in oh, Suffolk. Oh, Hopkins. Hopkins. Is that the real name of the real witch finder general, the one who proclaimed himself witch finder general? He was. He didn't. I don't think he proclaimed himself as witch finder general. He was just a self styled witch finder. Mm. Um, and the book is a work of fiction, based around the historical records of of the man right yeah um and it follows his sister alice through being widowed and coming back to where she grew up and having to go and live with her brother because at the time that was what you did and um how she had to help him find witches and how she hated it and yeah wow depressing it was actually do you know something it was really really depressing to read but i couldn't put it down i got home, as alan will attest i got home from work about what quarter to five yeah about that yeah put on my pajamas got myself comfy sat down and i didn't move until i'd finished reading the last half of the book which had to be at least 150 pages i just couldn't put it down i had to know how it ended would you recommend it though I would actually. I'm one of these people who are, who's like, you know, this book tore a hole in my soul and ripped a, ripped a, a twisted humanity around in my head and, and, and made me cry for six weeks on end. Read it. <laughs> but uh, no, my friend Leanne, she's read it as well and she said that it was, it was she, she agrees with my assessment of it being um, depressing but oddly really compelling it's if you've got any interest in the witch trials because the witch trials in Suffolk predate those of uh, Salem yes I know and um, yeah they didn't have uh, witch hunting in America until after us we managed to kill off a hundred odd or he managed to kill off a hundred odd before they found witches in Salem. 109. 109, yeah. And the Salem witch trials, towards the end of the book, there's hints because M Matthew Hopkins had three brothers, all of whom were clergy, one of whom lived in Boston. Right, okay. And he was writing to his brother, like I say, work of fiction again, he was writing to his brother in Boston and telling him about the good work he was doing on God's behalf in, in Suffolk. And uh, right at the end, right at the end of the book. Um, and it was, it was just... <sighs> it's hard to put into words and I'm terrible. I am an absolutely terrible book reviewer. I will, I will hold my hands up to that now. I am a terrible, terrible person. To review books because I'll either tell you that I loved it or that I hated it. There is no middle ground for me when it comes to books. I either absolutely adore them or I won't finish them. It's one or the other. But it was. It was. It was compelling. It was fast. It was very fast paced. Um, and rich. The rich in so much detail, and sorrow and heartache, and yeah. Okay, again, what was it called? Uh, the Witchfinder's Sister by Beth Underdown. So, out, out of five? I gave it five. Five out of five? Five out of five. Any book that makes me sit and read over 150 pages without moving to make so much as a cup of tea, it deserves five stars. Oh no, I, 
I can attest to that. I begged it make me a cup of tea five times. Didn't even hear him. That's probably because I was asleep. <laughs> I felt asleep watching, uh, what was we watching? The NHS Lifetime Awards or something. I woke up just in time to, to, to cancel the power server thing from turning the TV off. And then I went back to sleep again, but I'm kind of waking up me. Anyway, moving on. Okay, guys, after all that, Michelle's been and gone and picked another book. What are you going to read now? Well, I didn't pick it because, as I was saying about um, The Witchfinder's Sister, and Leanne had read it, and because I'd put it on my, finished on my Goodreads, and then it posted to Facebook, and she was commenting on it, and I'm like, I need something less depressing to read now. So she started suggesting books to me, none of which I actually own. Um, so I'm really going to have to look for those. Um... I'm going book shopping tomorrow, so that'll be nice. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you, Leanne. <laughs> so I was stood in front of my TV Red bookcase and I'm looking at it and I'm going, what am I going to read next? And I couldn't decide. So I took pictures of the shelves and said to Leanne, anything jumping out at you? And she went, ooh, ooh, I'll give you the sun by Jandy Nelson, which is actually another book that Leanne recommended to me. Um, that I actually bought. So um, she says, read that one next. So that's what I'm reading next. Okay, do Boot review in 10 hours. Ah, it's tight. Uh, mm, yeah. About 10 hours of reading. There's lots of. It's There's lots of words in it, you're, it, you're going to say. Doodling and. Moving on. Mm. 